Yes, we're all well, thank you. What are, what are you making of this whole saga that this is now turning into with Cristiano Ronaldo? It's all just been very messy right from the beginning. I think uh, from, from the moment he sort of asked for a transfer, which was late in the day, really, considering his excuse was he wanted to play in the Champions League. Um, he left it really late to, to ask for the transfer, so there wasn't a lot of time. Apparently, he did get offers to leave, and it was the Glazers that, that blocked the move. So, a very difficult situation for, for the manager. The manager showed a lot of strength in, in not playing. I know he didn't do a pre-season, so he probably wasn't fit to the, towards the start of the season, but I'm sure he is now. Um, and it's got to be a very difficult place for the manager to be in. I mean, you know, Ronaldo is record goal scorer, unbelievable goal scorer throughout his career. And, and at times, the last few weeks, United have probably looked like they needed a goal scorer. And, and to not put him in and stick, stick by his guns and, and play the team that he wants to play with his closing down and, and pressing sort of, uh, philosophy uh, for, for Mark to the manager but uh, it seems to be getting very messy It does all feel very messy and, and, and in a way it's starting to feel a little bit toxic as well um, I mean ultimately who's going to win this battle? You imagine where the way things are it's going to be Eric Ten Hag Well the, cl- the club's always bigger than any player any, anybody that's been at the club will tell you that um, but, but I think it is a little bit uh, spoiled bratish by, by Cristiano. I think uh, I think he's a bigger and better person than that. I think the players in the dressing room and that were on the pitch will will look up to him for for what he's done throughout his career. And this shows just a little bit of pettiness that that didn't really need to be doing. It's not it's not sort of 10, 15 minutes before the match. It's, it's sort of two minutes or a minute left on on the clock. So mm. why he has to leave there and can't just wait on the bench and congratulate his teammates after? Uh, I don't know because it was an amazing performance and and it, it, it's taken away from that. Lee, you playing under, under Alex Ferguson. How, how would he deal with this? <laughs> <laughs> difficult, difficult question, Dino, because, um, I mean, he, he obviously loves Ronaldo. He's like a bit of a long-lost son to him. So he would probably deal with it differently towards Ronaldo than he would to anybody else doing it. Um, but, but I'm just not sure that when Sir Alex was there, this would have actually happened. I think people would have known the rules and the laws and, and what comes of it. And I don't think it would have happened. We had, we had a lot of senior players towards the, you know, come to end their careers. That, 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 I mean, Brian Robson, one of them was was on the bench. You would never see Brian Robson walking off because he couldn't get on on the pitch. So, um, like I said, said before, it's a difficult situation for the manager, but he seems to be dealing with most problems very well at the moment. Well, it's a, it's a test for him to change the culture that you're on about, mm. which Alex Ferguson had the culture of, you do what I ask you to do. And, I mean... I heard the story about uh, Eric Cantona when he went round the dressing room and he says, Eric, you can't do that. He had to go everybody else. But I, I, I can't imagine him saying to the stewards, can you part the ways a bit, let Ronaldo walk off the pitch a bit more freely, lads, get out of the way, <laughs> get his car for him and let him go. But I mean, I think Ten Hag right now is building that sort of discipline and this is another hurdle he's got to get over, a big one. Oh, hugely. Uh, I, I totally agree, mate. Uh, I, think, um, I think the discipline... Has been missing from the club for years. I think I think that probably comes when when managers are getting changed um, at a pretty pretty quick pace. And, and Eric Ten Hag has come in. He's, he's laid down the law. Um, he's set some standards, uh, and he's he's sticking by him. And, and he's a strong strong enough character and strong enough manager to do that. And and I think it's what the club needs. I think uh, <clears throat> you know the, I think the the ground they've covered in games has has gone up since he's been there. I think the discipline's gone up. Uh, the aggression on the pitch has gone up, and I think it's all down to the manager. And I think uh, he'll, he'll deal with this, you know, accordingly. Uh, I, I think he's he's a pretty cool, calm customer, uh, and, and I don't think he takes any rubbish from anyone. No, no matter what your name is, how big you are, he knows what the club wants. He knows what he wants, uh, and he's not prepared to to let anyone get in the way, spit the dummy out, and and ruin what he's building. Hi, Lee Kev Campbell here, mate. Do you think Ten Hag could have dealt with this? early in the summer when he came into the club because let's let's be honest the big problem player at Manchester United for him is Cristiano Ronaldo so if you go and see him face to face maybe this type of incident wouldn't happen yeah I'm not sure exactly how the the meetings went during the summer when when the manager took over and Ronaldo was there but uh, from, from my understanding the manager was quite happy for him to leave because he wanted to leave 
Um, and, and it was the Glaziers that, that wouldn't let him go. I'm not sure how true that is or how much of that is just rumour and, and gossip. Um, so, so the manager was quite prepared to allow Ronaldo to do what he wanted to do. And it, and it, was a, it came from above him that he wasn't allowed to stay. So, um, you know, the, it's, it's, like I said before, it's a tricky situation for the, for the manager because Ronaldo comes with experience, with goals, with loads of ability, with, with, with a history of doing it year after year in whatever country he's playing in. Uh, and, and everybody needs goals. You know, we know it's the hardest thing to do. Well, probably not for you, Kev, but for most of us, it's the hardest thing to do on the pitch. So, and and Dino as well. Jeez, I'm playing with <laughs> of masters of it. Uh, it's, it's the hardest thing to do. And, and to have someone on the bench and not put them on, um, to have someone unhappy with his experience, and and I'm sure with with you know with, with the rest of the team and the rest of the lads in the dressing room all looking up to him. He has a massive influence in the, in the dressing room, the way he trains, the way he plays, the way he, con- he conducts himself. Um, so, yeah, really, really tough for the manager. And I'm not sure this problem is, is totally the manager. I think it's probably come from, from higher up from him. Mm. So he's been dropped, as we know, from the Chelsea squad for this weekend's game. So he won't be involved for Manchester United at Stamford Bridge. Reportedly been fined a million pounds or around that figure. And also now we're being told that he's training with the under-21s. Are they handling this all the right way, do you feel? Or is this a little extreme? Where would you stand on all of this? I think the manager's got to lay the law down. <clears throat> he's, got to, he's got to set the standards. He's got to make sure that people realise that you don't step out of line and you don't you don't break the rules that he's laid down. Uh, and, and he showed that Ronaldo's not going to get any preferential treatment. I think it's a it's, it's a strong and bold statement from him. Um, I think because Ronaldo has got the reputation uh, that, that he's got, and it, it would be quite easy to to bend rules and change rules for him. But the manager's made an unbelievable call and, and, and sort of dealt with him like he would deal with any other player. And he's put him with the under-21s and dropped him from the squad and fined him. So mm. everybody knows that if you break the rules, that's, that's, that's the punishment that's coming to you, no matter what your name is, how big you are, how good you are. Uh, you, you've got to toe the line. Lee, we had this sort of thing with Paul Pogba. And unfortunately for the football team, it's overshadowed the result they got and it's overshadowed how well they're doing and, and how well the team's starting to gel. So how do you see this panning out? Because, like, looking at it, a million pound, that's two weeks' wages, by the look of it. He's on 500 grand a week. Every month that goes by, it's costing the club a lot of money just to have him at the club. He's training with the under-21s. We've seen players doing that in the past. And every day, he's going to be on the back page while he's still at the club. How do you see it panning out? Because they've got a big game against Chelsea coming up, and we probably won't even speak about that. It'll be all Ronaldo. Yeah, and, and, and that's that's the the shame of it, really. I suppose um, the the team probably played the best I've seen them play for for quite a while. They, they absolutely dominated and battered Spurs. It could have been four or five. Larif pulled off some unbelievable um, unbelievable saves. Uh, it, it is it is a shame. But, but what do you do, Dino? You know the the, the transfer window is closed. He can't go anywhere. Um, the best you can do for the for the manager is just concentrate on on the players that are inside the dressing room walls. Try not to get them to to look at too much media and press coverage because uh, it's going to be taken away from them and, and put on Ronaldo. Maybe, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing that Ronaldo gets all the press and the and the, and the team can just toot along and, and get on with their things without without too much uh, heat on them. Um, but yeah, like you said, at the moment it's taken away from a really good performance. The team are getting better. You can see them getting better every week. I know they had a massive slip up against City, but. Anybody, anybody can do that against City if you, uh, if you go off to a bad start. So they've shown that they can come back from that as well. They've shown very good resilience yeah. and, and a bit of team bonding and, and team spirit. So to come back from that, uh, as well as they have done, is, is another great credit to them. Uh, and, and, and along the season, you know, the players will, will get their plaudits. Uh, but maybe at this time, it's just time to uh, allow Ronaldo to, to carry on with the, with, with the torch of the media and, uh, and and go under the radar and just concentrate on your game. Yeah. Lee, pleasure to chat to you. Thank you for yeah, being thanks, with us. Lee. Cheers, Lee. Cheers, Dino. Cheers, Kev. Thank you. Yeah, I, I mean, as Lee was saying there very quickly, bar that Manchester derby, every time they've taken on a, a so-called Big Six team, they have taken a liking to it, having beaten Liverpool, uh, Arsenal and Spurs most recently. Mm. So, uh, Chelsea next for Manchester United, in which is a 5.30 kickoff tomorrow. 
Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.